Good evening. Welcome to Cooperative Vermont. I'm Matthew Kropp. And I'm Eric Davis. And we're coming to you this uh, Sunday, October 6, 2013, live from VCAMP Studios in Burlington, Vermont. And we have a, uh, we have a pretty busy uh, mixed show this, this evening, but we'll be starting out with a, um, uh, in a few minutes, we'll be having Chris Riddell of the Granite City Grocery Project to create a food co-op in Barrie calling in to give us a little update. But until he calls, I um, figured we could give a little quick rundown of the, um, the, the history of the project. Yeah, it's a project that we've been following for a while on the show. Um, it's been really interesting to, 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 watch, to watch it evolve and watch it pick up steam. Um, and it really initiated, um, I think, from the fact that, that Barry um, has no grocery store in its downtown center. And it's, there's a population threshold where it's the only city in Vermont that, you know, over a certain population doesn't have a grocery within its sort of mm -hmm. downtown center. So yeah, so it's so it's been this, they've been going at this for quite a while, getting um, you know going around doing pledge drive, um, getting you know they believe they got over 600 people to pledge, um, and now they've kind of moved into from pledge mode into sort of you know getting people to to pay in their memberships and um, are really actively I think looking for a site, and there's also I believe some some board elections coming up um, pretty soon, so they're kind of looking for candidates to be on their first board of directors. Yeah, and um, we had the opportunity um, to chat, not, not on this program, but in some of our other efforts with uh, Emily Kaminsky, who's been a large part of um, getting that conversation started in Barrie. Uh, and it's been really um, interesting to hear about uh, all of the uh, ways in which they've tried to involve the get the community um, sort of involved in the effort and, and behind the effort. Um, yeah. And it's, you know, the, one of the things that would really struck me about um, talking to her in the story is in, in Barry how they, there's been this kind of stereotype about food co-ops that they really had to, to overcome in which, you know, particularly more low-income people saw them as these kind of a, a exclusive institutions. And so a lot of the organizing work that she's done, which has been pretty, pretty awesome, has been about kind of um, breaking down those stereotypes and, you know, really sort of communicating to the community that this food co-op can be a manifestation of the need of you know the needs and values of the people who are actually going to use it. It's not you know like they're going to clone say the Hunger Mountain Co-op and just plop it down in the berry, but it's going to be reflective of the people who are getting involved. Right, right. Um, which is I think you know a big uh, a big project because a lot of you know there's many food co-ops from the '70s wave were founded around the kind of like natural foods thing, rather than sort of motivation, um, and so. That's kind of left a lot of that. That has shaped people's view of what a food co-op can be, whereas like the actual concept can be much broader than than, than that. Right, and that, that you know that stereotype of a, a food co-op existing sort of for those the natural sort of foods um, that's certainly not unique to Barry. It, you know, it's something that food co-ops deal with, deal with all the time. And um, <clears throat> I know you know we had Molly on the show, and she's always thinking about how to sort of um, approach changing that um, that uh, perception, um, but I've really been impressed with with some of um, the efforts that Granite City Grocery has done to um, to sort of change the thinking around food co-ops. Mm -hmm. And I think their example really has been an inspiration to some other communities like uh, Morrisville and uh, now possibly um, Bristol as well. Sort of looking at looking seriously at the idea of you know re sort of building that kind of consensus among community members that's necessary to really say, all right, let's, let's have this kind of cooperative grocery store. Because it's not something where all you need to do is get a few movers and shakers, but you've really got to pull all different strands of the community together into, um, into, this, in, in, into a whole in which sort of the diversity of opinions and perspectives and values is something that, that can be honored and people can kind of coexist along with this project that's meeting everyone's needs. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, a, a food co-op is so much more than just a place to to get your food. We'll talk about city market later in the show, um, but it can really be the center of a community that um, sort of helps economically, sort of provides good jobs, and um, is a you know a, a place that keeps profits locally in 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 town rather than sort of a a corporate grocer who's going to you know, those profits are going to go back, go back to shareholders that are largely out of the area that that, that grocery store is serving. Mm -hmm. um, 
So it's a really, I think it's, you know, it's a, it's a good way to sort of meet a community's need. And um, yeah, I, I, I think it would fit Barry really well, but it's I've been really impressed with how um, proactive they've been in, in getting the community behind the effort. <laughs> So the um, you know and one of the other things about about Barry is that you have this kind of um, you know it's kind of one of you know Vermont does, does tends to be a rural state but it's one of those few towns that really has been sort of a rust kind of rust belt sort of deindustrialization vibe where they had you know really you know vibrant granite industry which is still there mm -hmm. and still still working but definitely not as profitable or as um, sort of wealthy as it once was so. There's been really a lot of um, discussion about kind of rein reinventing Barry, figuring out kind of what Barry's, you know, what Barry's future looks like. And they just finished the big uh, kind of the big the big dig in Barry when Barry had sort of completely tore up and re sort of re put in uh, the new roads and sidewalks and things. So, so downtown's looking right. pretty nice. And you know, I think that this this idea of you know just in general for the community this idea of that there's going to be this like walking distant like walkable downtown grocery store will be a sort of part of that that sense of kind of a renaissance for the for the town yeah you bring up a really interesting point there um the the really the, the unique history of barry as a historian i'm sure you know you it it appeals to you in terms of its labor roots and it has a really interesting story of, um of sort of you know crafting their own identity and a food co-op you know is you know is another way to sort of sort of do that because it's it's um, it can reflect the needs of the community rather than um, you know um, the, the whatever's coming down the corporate chain you know can mm -hmm. sort of um, establish its own identity and reflect um, reflect the community. <clears throat> So while we're, we're uh, waiting for Chris to call in, um, a few things, and we'll probably reiterate these um, at the uh, the end of the show as well. But a few events that are coming up, kind of related to uh, to co-ops. Um, the first is just kind of a little fun thing to do um, uh, next week. You know, it's, we're in kind of high leaf peeper season, uh, yeah. so next week um, my my uh, my parents are coming up and uh, figuring out something to do with them that would be suitably uh, honoring of the foliage. Um, and Mad River Glen, you know, the the co-op. Um, uh, the cooperative Ski Mountain is, has um, they're they're turning on their single chair lift um, on the weekend of October this this upcoming weekend October twelfth thirteenth. Um, so I was going to take my uh, my parents out and go ride the single chair up to the top of the mountain and then ride it back down. Yeah. Um, but so so that'll be kind of a little little fun uh, little fun event going on at, at a co-op. Um, and another another thing is on the fifteenth. I've been uh, involved in helping organize a uh, a an event that's um, bringing some folks from Mexico up. Um, it'll be at H.O. Wheeler School from 6 to 8 p.m. Uh, Co-ops, the, the title of it is Co-ops Democratizing the Economy, Perspectives from uh, Mexico and Vermont. And so there's a group of um, people from an organization called the FAT um, who will be talking about kind of the, what's going on in the world of Mexican cooperation. And uh, also this uh, group, sort of what's been an in, kind of informal group of worker co-ops in uh, in Verm in sort of the Burlington area, or really kind of like northern Vermont, um, is going to be is sort of formalizing their relationship um, into like an actual organization, and so that they will be announcing kind of the official launch of their organization at this event as well. Wow, cool. which is really cool. Yeah, there's um, a few different uh, worker co-ops involved, including uh, uh, Data Systems, um, Web Skillet, Diggers Mirth, Catamount Solar, and PT360. Are the f five sort of that I'm aware of right now? I believe um, I think there's some talk of including as well Cecile Green's um, Round Sky Solutions. Yes, Round Sky Solutions, and then I don't know about Red House, which is a worker co-op um, design build design build firm. Um, I don't know if they're they're going to be affiliating with that, but um, but that but that so it'll be basically like a northern version of um, what in kind of southern Vermont, western Massachusetts, the Valley Alliance of Worker Co-ops. So that will be kind of a, and then after that we'll hopefully be having a, a kind of an, an after party sort of co-op happy hour style um, that will include, oh, well here's our caller. Hello. Matthew? Yep. Uh, 
This is Eric uh, Matthews uh, sitting to my right here. Oh, great. Well, welcome to the show. Oh, <laughs> hi. This is Chris Riddell, Granite City Grocery. Nice to talk to you, Eric. Matt. Uh, nice to talk to you as well. We've been following um, the story of Granite City Grocery um, for a while here. It's really exciting. So um, we're, it's our, our pleasure to have you on the show. So do you ha- Great. Um, Happy to be here. So we, we, we provided the viewers with a little bit of kind of the, the background of where, where Granite City Grocery has been thus far. But so what's the, what's the latest news out of, um, and what, what's the latest stuff that's kind of on your, on your plate as you move this project sure. forward? Sure, Yeah, um, well, you know, we've been, so you know a little bit about how that we've been only at this a little over a year, which is, it's a little surprising when I look back and see that, you know, a little over a year ago was an idea that a couple of people had, and now, uh, at this point, we are currently at 350 owners. Those are the folks who have committed money for shares and completed owner agreements. Wow. And uh, we only started uh, collecting shares and, and really uh, getting owners as a formal process towards the uh, middle of July. So in less, you know, in a couple, a little over two months, we've, um, we've turned over half of our pledges into owners. And we get, we get new ownerships every day. It's, it's great. Um, and it's actually developmentally right where we want to be. Um, we've crossed the threshold with 300 owners from um, sort of the organizational phase and into uh, more of the formal feasibility stage. And we, what that indicates to us is that there we have a, a critical mass of people that think this is a, a good enough idea to commit to, and um, it's letting us move forward into actually evaluating sites and doing the financial sort of uh, due diligence that we need to do to make sure that, indeed, it's going to be a feasible business idea. So, so now that you guys have that kind of critical mass of, of members, what are the sort of next few steps? You mentioned uh, you mentioned uh, site. Um, kind of what, what are what are sort of what's the immediate future looking like for you guys? Well, there's a couple of things. Um, I, I, one thing I do want to plug is the the fact that we're um, having our annual our first owner meeting. So our first annual meeting is a, a next milestone for us going to be happening in mid-November, and we're going to have our first board elections. The board that's currently sitting was self-appointed as part of incorporating as a cooperative, and um, we are going to be holding our first elections for 11 board slots. So that is another developmentally big milestone for us. It's the shift from a cooperative in name to um, one of the principles in terms of a democratic organization, uh, a cooperative in, in action. So that's big for us. Um, and, and how are you guys running the election? Oh, is go it, ahead. Sorry. Is, 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 so you've got 11 seats open, and uh, you're sort of actively encouraging members to run. Um, is, the, is the election going to happen sort of at the annual, at, at this meeting that's coming up? Or is it, are you going to have an extended balloting period? How's, how's, how's the election going to be run? Uh, well, we have a nominating committee that's been appointed by the board that will be collecting applications from owners who want to be who want to be considered as nominees for the board. And those applications will be available on October 11th and basically it's uh, you know letting people tell a little bit about themselves why they want to run for the board Grand City Grocery. And then the nominating committee will be uh, is not there are no owners on there who are considering running. They'll be coordinating gathering those names and, and meeting with the candidates as a group just to sort of let them know a little bit more about what's involved, how it works. And um, then, yes, the idea is that we'll have a slate of candidates um, on by October 28th. We'll send out our annual meeting, our official notification on the 29th, and it'll include a ballot. And people will have from then until November 15th to complete the ballot either mail it in or bring it with them sealed in an envelope to the annual meeting. So um, it's pretty exciting. That, that is really exciting. Um, I, I, I've been really struck by how, um, how the, some of the folks that started this idea have really reached out to the community and, and tried to um, sort of in, incorporate everyone um, into the, the vision. So. Sort of, if on along those lines, um, 
have you have you seen um, interest in the community? Um, like, what's the community response um, been? Well, it, it's been I, frankly, I'm overwhelmed by the response, um, and I, I think part of that is because of the intentionality that we've had to make this a truly community-owned endeavor, and. We've met at, um, Barry has a couple of um, senior housing uh, developments. We've had two meetings in our senior housing developments. We have had we have several owners who live there. We have people who live downtown, folks who are connected as uh, participants in programs at Community Action at Central Vermont has been a big partner in helping us hold conversations. Um, and we have people who, you know, are living in Barry or around Barry who currently shop at Hunger Mountain Co-op, so they're really in it for, you know, the idea of a natural a market that carries natural products that would be in Barry. And then we've got people who, you know, honestly are looking for um, access to fresh food downtown and a connecting point for for lots of people, you know, to meet in the community. So I think we're we're doing pretty well along those lines. We, we definitely, one thing that we're, you know, working on and we're trying to encourage um, someone, on you know, board members to to think about, uh, particularly someone maybe from these communities who would want to run, is how can we continue to make sure that we're as accessible as possible to people for whom, you know, financial, uh, the, the barrier of committing to a share financially might be, a hindrance, and that's sort of a difficult proposition when you're trying to capitalize a retail store at the same time that you're trying to build the the cooperative as an organization. But we're really committed to trying to figure out how to do that, and and we've had um, you know between payment plans and some other ideas that we've come up with, we're starting to broaden that pool to of, of owners. So. So, so once the um, you know you're you're having this this board election and you'll have your first you know democratically elected board of directors, um, what are what's once they're you know in office and rolling along, what are the the big things that will be on their plate kind of in the in the coming months? Sure. Uh, so in the next three to six months, um, actually the next three to four months is a good time window. Really talking about the end of the year, maybe a little beyond. Uh, we really would like to get to 600 owners within three to four months. That is a, uh, another milestone that's been presented to us by the folks we're working at, at Cooperative Development Services, as a, uh, a kind of a benchmark for co-op our size to say we have financial feasibility from the number of owners who have bought in. So that's, that's kind of key to the business plan. Once we have that, we'll actually be able to, with some more conf- with confidence, take the, the numbers that we've developed as part of a, we have a committee that's working on developing a pro forma, which is essentially a, a, a document laying out the financial feasibility. How much debt could this you know, endeavor take on? How much sales would we need per square foot in order to support that debt? And that, that piece is central to building a business plan that we can take along with our 600 owners to banks and co-ops in the area to say, okay, you know, we need to start talking about how to leverage our ownership to uh, get other capital from the community in order to, you know, seriously talk to uh, landowners or landlords or um, site owners for, about negotiating for a site. So once we hit that 600 mark, we'll really enter into a new phase of um, we're on the cusp where we'll actually be able to talk about sites like intel you know with some uh, confidence that we can openly start inquiring about sites because we have this kind of financial foundation built that's our next big big milestone that way so chris as uh, you know uh, Start taking on this endeavor. It's a it's a huge huge um, challenge, and I, I'm sort of curious in terms of other food co-ops and and cooperation amongst cooperatives. Have have you found other um, co-ops in, in in the region to be supportive, and 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 if so, um, how? Yeah, uh, you know that principle of uh, co 
cooperatives cooperating with other cooperatives has been central to how to our success thus far. You know, we got a, a grant from the Hunter Mountain Food Co-op early on in that allowed us to, um, in addition to money that we raised from the community, qualify for a matching grant from the Food Cooperative Initiative, which is an endeavor that's funded by food co-ops to help new co-ops start up. And with that money, we've been able to work with Cooperative Development Services, which is a cooperative of cooperative consultants who help co-ops not only open, uh, but also to uh, help them you know, develop more uh, robust governance, address issues in their stores. And that's just sort of the formal ways. We're part of the neighboring food co-op association, and, you know, people are just really supportive in terms of offering us their experience. Um, we've had, you know, we've had presentations from the general manager at the Hanover Co-op. We've worked a lot, talked a lot with the folks at the Monadnock Food Co-op that just opened last fall in Keene. And people are, you know, co-ops are whatever you need, like, let us know in terms of information sharing and, like I said, with Hunger Mountain Co-op, you know, hard money. And um, and then the, the whole movement as a whole providing funding for startups has just been great. That's great to hear. So I know I know you've got a um, you've, you've you've got a run, but um, before you do any other, um, do you have any other kind of uh, things you people should know about the project or um, how to get involved? Sure. Um, if you'd like to get involved, I, I really encourage you to go to our website, GraniteCityGrocery.coop. Um, that's where you can find our latest news and information. It's also where you can sign up for the newsletter. And if you want to become an owner you can uh, complete that application online or download one. Um, and also find us on Facebook, um, Granite City Grocery. So facebook.com slash Granite City Grocery is another great place to just follow what we're doing. And if you have any questions, you can email me uh, directly, c-m-r-i-d-d-e-l-l -L at gmail.com. And I'm happy to answer any questions. I'm, I'm on the board currently and I'm going to be running this fall, so um, that's that's what I would encourage people to do if you want more information. Any of those sources. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for uh, for calling in and uh, giving us the update. Yeah, thank you for having me on, Eric. Thanks, Matt. Appreciate it. Our pleasure. Take care. All right. You too. Bye bye. All right. So yeah. So again, um, we should uh, we should. Yeah, you can uh, check out their Facebook page um, and their their website for a lot of um, a lot of good information. But we'll be continuing to follow that story as it can, as it develops over the coming months. Um, but you know, on the topic of food co-ops, um, City Market um, uh, is not so much of a startup. It actually had its 40th anniversary this year, um, and they've been celebrating in a variety of ways. Um, a bottle of something especially delicious um, came out recently, and uh, yeah, you can see it right there. Um, I've nearly jumped out of my skin when I saw that because it's <laughs> puns and co-ops, which are like two of my favorite things in the world. And beer, which you know, that's really three favorite things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, but you know, puns and co-ops. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so the, um, so, but they've been celebrating this, this anniversary in a variety of ways. And um, actually uh, just yesterday had their annual meeting. Um, so every year, City Market does a you know, really great annual meeting where they um, go from like 10 to noon on a Saturday. They do a brunch. There's child care provided for folks who have kids um, at the YMCA, which is right next door. Um, and so, th so this year was you know, the, the 40th anniversary. And um, I think you had a chance to attend the, attend the meeting, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, I'll, go a few, I'll sort of run through a few... Um, Few little kind of updates as to what happened, and then yeah, we actually um, have a video. So, as part of the 40th anniversary celebration, they commissioned um, a video that kind of talks talks about the co-op and some of its history and stuff like that um, that they showed at the annual meeting, and uh, we were able to get our hands on a copy. So, we'll, we'll show that. But um, so, a few kind of takeaways fr from the meeting. Uh, the first is that City Market's continuing to grow. It's now, um, you know, definitively like the the lar revenue wise, the largest. Um, most kind of successful food co-op, single store food co-op of any co-op in the country. That's amazing. Um, they did 36 million in revenue or in uh, revenue and business in the last fiscal year. 
Um, for members, the, um, the, the patronage refunds, which is the check that you get at the, um, every year that's as a co-op, it operates on a not-for-profit basis towards its members, so you get a check at the end of the year with, with the profit it w the co-op would have made off of you. Um, that's split up into two, two pieces. One piece is kind of retained in your name by the co-op. It's kind of like reinvesting in the co-op. And the other piece is they cut a check and send it to you. So 55% uh, was of, the, of that total is going out in checks, which comes out to be a little more than four cents per dollar spent. Um, so the average, the average check, I believe, um, is supposed to be like, I think, 90, like $92. Um, so those checks will be going out in early November. So if you're out there and you're a city market member and wondering when, when you're going to get a nice little mini uh, stimulus package from the co-op, that's when that's happening. Um, at the meeting, they also um, have had all the candidates for the uh, board of directors give, give kind of little stump, two-minute stump speeches. Uh, their elections are, they don't do voting at the meeting, but rather have an elections period. So go the, the voting started on October 1st and will continue to the 21st. Um, and so if you go to, the, go to the website, you can find the, um, both like the candidate bios and the, the, ability, the place to vote. So um, there's six candidates running for three seats, um, three incumbents and three sort of challengers. Um, and they all sort of, they all seemed pretty qualified and there wasn't, the, the, the vibe really wasn't acrimonious. It was, you know, everyone was kind of talking about why they wanted to be involved, but there wasn't like really any tension between the, the people who weren't on the board and the people who were. Um, and then, you know, the, the, the meeting kind of concluded with some, uh, with just some people qu asking questions about various things. Uh, one particular topic that was pretty, um, that was, there was a fair amount of discussion about was the, the potential for opening a second store. Um, so they, according to the folks there, they're continuing to work on it. Uh, the idea is um, really to sort of open a store in a place that will take as much of the strain off the current location as possible, because everyone who's been to the current city market's parking lot knows that it's a nightmare all the time. Uh, so, so they're looking at somewhere in the Pine Street area um, and continuing to look at that. And there's also talk of um, sort of along with that, although probably after the idea would be this, this, this would be after sort of a second store is opened. Um, would be kind of local sort of neighborhood sized groceries in Winooski in the Old North End of about 5,000 square feet or so. Uh, so, so that's kind of like, the, that's, there's definitely expansion on the horizon. Um, and uh, the, the membership is now um, above 9,000. And to put that in perspective, in 2006, I believe, um, membership was about 2,500. So the membership has has tripled in you know under a decade, which is a pretty pretty good sign of health. So all told, you know like the, the numbers can you know three million more in revenue over last year. You know strong patronage refunds, et cetera. Uh, so fiscally and the and um, membership wise, the city market is doing pretty well. That, that's that's really exciting report back. Um, I think that idea of really of smaller scales uh, s smaller stores um, spread all over Burlington is really cool mm -hmm. I think that really make uh, you know w what city market offers accessible to, to a lot more more folks and um, also uh, as, a, as, a, as another member owner um, I've ha I, I didn't get a chance to go to the annual meeting but I did um, review the, the candidates that were running and I was really um, amazed not only by just you know, that it seems like a really competitive election, which is, you know, critical for, you know, the democratic process. But mm -hmm. uh, they just all seemed like really well-qualified candidates, and I was really excited to see, um, you know, that th mm -hmm. those people volunteering for, to, yeah. to take part in governance. And, uh, and yeah, just as a little uh, little shout-out, not to try to influence the process too much, but uh, Julia Curry, who is, um, who's on the, who's come on our show before, is one of the candidates, so... <laughs> um, but yeah, so and then um, kind of one other thing I learned that was kind of interesting is for, me, for many years they've been doing the annual meeting and this, you know, they put a tent up in the back parking lot and that's the, the sort of space for it, and, which has led to some fun situations. I remember one year where it was raining heavily and it was a cold October day and my, there was about an inch of water like under the tables as we were like shivering doing the annual meeting. So starting next year, the annual meetings are no longer going to be there, but are going to start being at the, um, the Memorial Auditorium. Uh, so indoors, um, still close by to, to the co-op, but um, you know, sort of a, a larger space that will allow for kind of, for, and plus that will also, the, uh, the other side is every year, 
so today actually from uh, noon to four they do the harvest festival which is a bunch of the vendors whose whose products are sold in city market provide free samples so you go and just at lunchtime and you're like mm, you know have a lunch of samples essentially nice. so the idea will be they'll be able to also do that in memorial auditorium just one more comment on the on the city market um on, on, on that piece, um, going back to the fact that City Market has the most sales um, in, in the U.S., I believe, and, you know, we had just talked about sort of the strength of the democratic process and, and how accessible their annual meetings are and, you know, how, how many people take part in them, um, that they're such a principled cooperative, um, and, you know, th that has led to their, you know, sort of economic success. Um, I just, I, you know, applaud them for that. <clears throat> yeah, and one one other thing that's actually um, on the radar that I learned sort of afterwards talking to one of the staff members is potentially um, the the board meeting. Their monthly board meetings are open to the public, but they're now considering actually videotaping the board meetings and putting them on uh, sort of online so that members who can't actually physically attend can still be sort of up to date as to the. You know what the board's talking about, so that's cool. another thing to that um, you know that uh, that is on the radar and we'll hopefully be seeing in the near future. Um, so, but so we um, uh, to sort of wrap up the the city market discussion, we have video the video that they showed at the annual meeting um, that is uh, was put together you know a variety of interviews that really sort of I think does a pretty good job of giving a giving a sense of both where city market's been and kind of what's going on with it now. So. We're going to watch that. When we get back, we'll have some uh, some updates around um, around upcoming events and a few other tidbits of co-op news. So stay tuned. Market is my lifeline. It's really amazing being part of a community owned grocery store. It's one of the things that makes Burlington what it is. City Market has over a thousand Vermont vendors. City Market Onion River Food Co op has the largest sales of any co op in the country. I mean, 40 years of getting the job done, starting out small, and now becoming one of the most successful co ops in the whole country. It's an incredible testament to community support and great management. City Market has become not only a Burlington hub for groceries and healthy choices, but actually a Vermont hub. I'm especially pleased with City Market's commitment to featuring products from local farmers. Here's this cooperative model that is this economic engine that's doing things that a lot of businesses around here can't do. The co-op is meeting a need, serving the community very well, serving all elements of the community. I've met so many people who said this place has changed my life. Distribution of uh, profits back into the community that makes a whole lot of sense. It really is a good slice of life about like what's going on in Burlington, what are our values. It's not just about a place where the food purchase happens. You know, you feel like you're a part of something. It's definitely a store that is invested in its community. And the connections with places like the Intervale. You go to the produce section and there's a face behind that tag. The health that we have in Burlington is directly related to places like this. You, know, you feel like you're supporting them and they're supporting you with all these great food. And... It grows a community and we grow it. It's, it's symbiotic. We're celebrating our 40th birthday. So 40 years ago in 73, when the Articles of Incorporation were filed with the state to make this buying club an official business. The co-op actually started in, a li in living rooms of people who wanted to do bulk buying. Somebody talked about a buying club, so we started buying oatmeal and flour and sugar and all that other stuff. People coming back to the land, it was called. It grew to be a hundred plus buying clubs. As people learned that they could get good food that way. The adage, food for people, not for profit, was one of our mantras. That was the very beginning. And the thing just sort of grew and became a viable business opportunity. So we moved, I think, to Archibald Street first. I was actually on the first board of directors. I was on the first board of directors at the co-op. Well, it was on Archibald Street, and I was a working member then when I was in college. And it was like working, walking into somebody's kitchen that smelled of all the spices and there were jars of honey and 
maple syrup and rice and we loved it. Almost everything was bulk, so you'd bring your jar for your oil, you'd bring a jug for your maple syrup. There weren't any computers. And then at the register you had to tell them what your item cost. So you had to box your own groceries. There was, no, right, there was no meat. That was a debate. We also had a credit union. Moving from uh, Archibald Street to the North Winooski store, which was a whole lot bigger again. And it was a big chain of literally people positioned Bags at Archibald all the, all the way up to down. North Winooski, and <laughs> we passed everything. I mean, it was symbolic. It was still a raw edged, flamboyant, joyous experiment. We were part of this sort of countercultural movement that the co-op was part of. In order to become City Market, the co-op really did need to change. And I remember debating with friends and others, is it better to keep it small and have it be a tight-knit community, or is it better to expand the benefit of natural foods at a decent price? Moving City Market to downtown and becoming a downtown supermarket was was imperative for the city. How is it going to be as a hybrid, both a grocery store for the downtown and be a health food store and be a co-op? I remember so well the void is created when the only downtown Burlington grocery store closes doors. I call when Mayor Cavell came to me with an idea to replace the old grocery store. He wanted to put it at the former site of the Burlington Police Department. It was a chance to turn the liability of this empty lot into what would be a great asset for the community. So I was delighted to be in a position to help secure funds to make the project possible. And the Onion River Co-op submitted the winning proposal, and City Market was born. To be the downtown supermarket, uh, we agreed with the city that about 25 to 30 percent of the products would be conventional so that we reflected the community that we serve. In order to do that, we were basically uh, increasing the retail space fourfold. The number of employees, about the same amount. Now the place runs like a Swiss watch. And it also kept one of the original promises that they would have food as inexpensive as you could get in the grocery stores. The fact that City Market and Onion River Co-op works so well on cooperative principles, I think has not changed. We've transitioned and really morphed into a solid business in the co-op model. And that's what's great. It's gotten bigger, uh, but, but uh, not more anonymous. One interesting thing to reflect on on the 40th anniversary of the co-op is really how the history of the co-op has in many ways tracked the history of Burlington. Burlington was such a different place than 30 years ago uh, than it is today, whether you're looking at the waterfront or the, the Church Street Marketplace, in terms of if you're looking at uh, how diverse a community we are, uh, the change in the city during that period has been just enormous. I think in an important way, the, the co-op has been part of that. City Market has become part of the formula for Burlington's thriving and livable downtown. We have one of the best places to live anywhere in this great nation. As a member, it's, you know, I feel a sense of ownership and pride in that. A food store that is providing food for people locally, any extra profit stays in the community. It's focused on supporting the local economies. Whenever I go to a normal grocery store, I'm always taken aback and amazed at how different it is. It's so completely different than any other supermarket. Well, the other ones, my parents think it's like they don't have as good food. There's, there's always this conversation about the difference between a conventional grocery store and city market as a cooperative. And while we are profitable, our driven focus is not bottom line profitability. Part of our commitment is to eliminate childhood hunger. And a lot of what we do is involved with that, whether it's the food shelf, whether it's the farm to plate, whether it's the Boys and Girls Club. We offer support for COTS in terms of temporary shelter. The co-op itself will uh, give to these different nonprofits. I'm also involved in the Burlington Food Council, and City Market's been you know, one of our really strong supporting members. Now at Hunger Free Vermont, I work pretty closely with the co-op. Uh, we are very fortunate to receive grant funding from um, City Market. The co-op model is different, and it's proving more and more uh, to be a much better much less destructive. If you think about what happened with the housing, you think about the banking, all these things that are where people are being driven by making decisions that are strictly about the bottom line and what's in it for them. We don't have to do that. City Market is my future. Lots of colors and lots of good smells. And a cooperative, and a cooperative is as close to egalitarian as you can get in a capitalist society. 
vibrant. It's excellent food. A place to get food, a place to see friends. A place of exuberance. It creates energy rather than drains it. City Market is family friendly. Phenomenal place to work. Accessible. It's all about community. This is a marvelous institution. It's where I go when I want to get good food at a good price and see good people. Yeah, I do 100% of my grocery shopping. Almost exclusively at the co-op. We have people who come from out of town who love City Market. It's definitely on the list of places to see when friends come from out of town. There's so many ways that City Market rewards me for going there. Well, I'm lucky. I come here early in the morning, so I beat the crowd. An oh, important part of... Uh, my daily life. I was just in awe. I thought, this is the best grocery store. We've got the best. Shop here, folks. And everyone's like, oh, you're going to City. I'm going to go too, because I'm going to go and get the gummy bears in the bulk section. I shop here because it's the downtown grocery. For us, it's walkable. We live in the old North End, so we can walk. I come in on a bike path. I got everything downtown. I got the grocery store downtown. I can ride my bike here and take two full bags of groceries home. It's also on the bus line. It makes things very convenient. You can buy on a daily basis. I'm really big on minimizing the energy costs associated with food. Another thing that hasn't changed is a commitment to wholesome food, supporting local agriculture, supporting organic food products and organic producers of food, and trying to make sure that those who produce food earn a livable wage has always been a priority for the co-op. You produce it, we'll buy it, and it's basically what we say to the farmers. So. You know, having a place in between there that's called City Market is one of the best, you know, places you could have in between farmer and customer if you've got to have something between farmers and customers. Last year, local purchases um, were about 33% of our product, about $11 million. We have, on any given day, as many as 2,400 local products. My job is, as much as it's about growing vegetables, it's about making relationships and developing those relationships. You know, if we're gonna have a local agricultural economy in Vermont, we need fantastic uh, stores uh, like City Market that is gonna sell the farmer products. It's pretty amazing to be able to shop in you know, downtown and get food from within 20, 30, 50 miles. Participating in the food economy in a way that really means something to me. Everything is local. I like corporate food. <laughs> you can say, well, I know my meat came from Heinsberg. I know my garlic came from Jane Pamacala in Grand Isle. And so we can say it. it came from 30 miles away. A lot of these startup businesses where new products, where it's value-added products. So we have all the stuff that's in our grab-and-go. Those are new uh, Americans who are coming in here and who are starting a business. So it takes so many different shapes uh, of what local is. My dollars spent here come back to me through, as through my business. There's that whole aspect of dollars that are spent in the community that stay in the community have a multiplier effect. The money stays here, the money gets spent here. Strolling down the aisle at the city market, checking out the items on my shopping list, putting new potatoes into my basket. When I heard somebody talking about membership, she said I became a member of the market co-op. I think this is what was appealing to us and being able to eat um, affordable natural foods. Number one, the food is awesome. Produce, ah, oh, I'm friends with produce. Fruit, like fruits and vegetables. You can get a good lunch there, here. What City Market has done is prepared foods, which has been outstanding. And yogurt and milk. Market helps me and my family eat more healthfully without even trying. We actually have this game we play when we're hiking and it goes around in a circle and we can spend half an hour figuring out what our number one city market buy would be. What we would buy if we were at the co-op right then. Yeah. Good cheeses, good local produce, good meat, good bread. I mean, I'm getting hungry. <laughs> we have eggs and cheese, cultured milk from a goat, unusual vegetables, handmade soaps, kombucha on tap, granola bins, beer and wine and sausages. Local popcorn, local beans, reverse osmosis, water machine, candles and chickens, artists and tofu, frozen pizza, gelato. The one thing that hasn't changed is you can be certain if you've been in Burlington for any length of time, going to the co-op is, is an experience where you will certainly meet someone that you know. I see friends, relatives. <laughs> 
I see ch my, some of my children chopping. I see members from my religious community, from my political uh, arena. It is notable for how busy the store almost always is. It's a great place to socialize, and at this time of year, be outdoors at the patio or indoors, and they're both great places to schmooze. Yeah, I pretty much can't go to City Market without running into a, at least like five people I know. <laughs> and, and I get to know the cashiers. I, I'm seriously here every day. Also, I really love the staff that are here because they all know us by name. They know what they're doing and can help you out. It always takes far longer than you expect because you run into friends. When I started here seven years ago, I think our membership number at the time were about 2,500 members. We now are close to 9,326 the last time I checked. Almost 80% of the staff that work here are members of the co-op. I've been a co-op member since the beginning. For 33 years. Since the early 80s. 27 years. I guess since we moved here about 14 years ago, for about five years now. I've always been a member. I imagine we've been about a month of moving here. My roommates and I all joined together on one account. Every year we discover something new that the an awesome benefit to being a member. <laughs> I'm a member because I like the idea of having an ownership stake in the businesses that I uh, give my money to. There's, you know, having certain say in sort of how something is run that provides you great food. We depend on the members. I mean, they one, they're the owners. They've invested their dollars into it in terms of creating their equity. And it's because of their participation that we continue to support the co-op principles of democratic one vote for, for each member. People have input into how the business runs and I've been really lucky to be on the board. That big picture level of thinking about the life of the organization is kind of what the board's work is. We've had the patronage refund program where we take our member purchases and we're able to refund back to our members. At the end of the year you get a dividend check for how much money you spend at City Market, which is awesome. Over the past five and a half years, we, we all sent back $2.7 million back into the community as a way of saying thank you to members for what they purchased. At the end of the year, I get a check for doing what I would do anyway. It draws people together. It gives you a feeling of ownership. It represents community expressed uh, in an economic way. I get the peace of mind knowing that there's a business in town that's not operating solely for profit. You're not looking as much as a bottom line, but as a community bottom line. And having that money circulate back into the community. It's a co-op. The money stays right here in the community. We do have a, a Food for All program which is a membership uh, that we created so that if somebody either participates in the food stamps, WIC, or Social Security Disability, uh, they can come in and get a 10% discount. When we were on WIC, we got a WIC discount, which was wonderful. The Food for All program helped my family when my son was first born, we made it very affordable. That group of members has grown into over a thousand people who have joined. In last year, the Food for All purchases were a million nine. Participating in that kind of collective action of, of creating an entity that serves the whole community by becoming a member. You've got the great food, you've got great community, you've got a lot of jobs created. There's a lot of great things just happening kind of within the store walls, but I think for us, you know, the more important parts are really what's happening outside of the walls. It's an essential part of the community. It's just really a powerful feeling for me to a sense of belonging, being part of something that's bigger than myself. I'm amazed at just how deeply co-op staff go out of their way to support the local food economy and really build local businesses. As the director of the Interval Center, obviously we have a lot of strong partnerships with City Market. Do you want to eat it? Well, we're volunteering at Somervale right now. They really like to encourage people to work in the community if they can. Do some member worker hours for cool organizations like Grow Team One. I do my membership hours at the Sustainability Academy. They're huge supporters of Somervale, <laughs> and everybody loves Somervale. City Market promotes community outreach by having member work hours with their community partners, so Intervale's one of them. Right. And it's, it's been great. Fund. We get to meet a lot of people in the Burlington area. Food programs that educate people about nutrition. They've been very active in my son's school um, and have given donations of food and other supports. Co-op members have supported our work strengthening the local food system. Giving some tangible benefit to various nonprofits and educational organizations. I think it is very impressive as well what uh, the co-op has done to um, serve the entire community. If we're going to survive on this planet, we have to develop a community. community. That's been a community all along. Well, I can imagine how much work went in in the early days to make it what it is today.
Even though I wasn't there, I appreciate the, the time and the energy that all of the people who founded the market have kept it going this long have put into it. So on this 40th anniversary of the co-op, congratulations. Best wishes to the city market, to its nearly 9,000 members, to our entire community for many more successful years in serving our community in the heart of our community. Marcel and I are so very, very proud of you all. Happy anniversary, 40 years going strong. May there be another 40 and more after that. Happy anniversary. A happy anniversary, all our anniversaries should be happy. I didn't know they were that old, and that is amazing to me. Holy moly. Happy 40th and forever young. Happy anniversary to the co-op, happy 40th anniversary. Uh, here's to the first 40 and at least another 40 uh, for the next 40 years. If I'm lucky, I'll be here for the 41st. Happy birthday, we are so <laughs> obsessed with you. Glad you're here. We really love you. Happy birthday, City Market. Happy anniversary, City Market! From the Intervale Center, board, staff, everybody I represent, happy 40th birthday, City Market. Happy, happy birthday, ORC! <laughs> happy birthday! The perfect day to locally invest. Now when they ask if I'm a member, I get to say yes. I said I became a member of the Market Co-op. Now I save money every time that I shop. I just want to tell you and go tell everyone to be a member of the Co-op. Welcome back to Cooperative Vermont. That was the uh, the 40th anniversary video that City Market put together for their um, for their annual meeting that happened yesterday. Um, so, any uh, any reflections on that before we? Uh... Yeah, yeah. I, I just what struck me the most was um, sort of the the emotion that that um, the connection that 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 City Market had with uh, people had with City Market. Um, I I don't think many people feel that way about. Uh, Corporate grocery stores, so uh, the cooperative advantage right there. Oh yeah. So um, so a few before uh, before the show ends, a few other a uh, few other items. Um, there's another uh, cooperative project that's kind of getting underway in Winooski. Um, so the Winooski Circle Arts um, is a gallery that started has started started up as a pop up gallery. Um, but I had a conversation with uh, Liza Cowan, who's one of the the people involved with organizing it, and. Um, they're going to be, I think, opening on the 15th of this month as an artist's co-op, which um, is a pretty common model, you know, kind of almost like a producer co-op thing for crafts people and artists. Um, but, so, but we haven't really had one of these around Burlington for a little while, so this will be interesting. And I think we might even try to, try to have um, Liza or some of the other folks involved on the show at some point in the near future. But. And there's a sneak peek at their space there. It looks, looks beautiful. Mm -hmm. Can't wait to check it out. And um, one sort of a, one other kind of piece of news is uh, the VSCCU, um, the credit union, has been putting the call out um, that, like the uh, Granite City Grocery, they're they're looking for people to be board candidates. So if you're a member of the VSCCU and would be interested in serving on the board, um, uh, you can head over to their website and throw your hat in the ring uh, to to participate in the in the governance. Um, but then, uh, so sort of finally, there's just We'll talk, we were talking a little bit about this earlier, but a couple of events coming up. Yeah. Um, so the big, one, the big one that's on the radar is October 15th um, is the uh, Co-ops Democratizing the Economy Perspectives from Vermont and Mexico. Uh, so, so members of the FAT, which is a Mexican organization, their cooperative wing is going to be coming up. Uh, there'll also be worker co-ops, and I'll be giving a short presentation just about the kind of state of the cooperative movement in Vermont presently. Oh, cool. And then there should be kind of breakouts for discussions, um, and then people will go from there to the uh, to the One Pepper Grill for kind of an after party to, you know, sip cold beverages and you know talk co-op movement. That'll so that'll be our next co-op happy hour. Mm -hmm. um, yep. And the the events. Um, is also part of New Economy Week, which yes. is happening that week. Yes, New Economy Week starts, I believe, this coming Friday, um, and there's a number of events kind of going throughout the throughout the week. So, um, so if you uh, head on our head on our Facebook page, I'll post um, one. Of, I'll post kind of a, a list, a link to sort of the list of the um, all the events that are happening. Mm -hmm. um, but so so for the um, for that that event, the uh, it'll be start at 6 p.m. at H O Wheeler in in Burlington. 
if you want to check that out. Um, then so two other thing or one another event um, that we'll hopefully also have a co-op happy hour tied to is November fifth is Bank Transfer Day. So if you're like the idea of moving money out from uh, from your from too big to fail banks and into cooperatively owned credit unions, uh, some folks will be gathering in front of the uh, the Citizens Bank on the corner of College and um, St. Paul Streets and uh, encouraging people to move their money. And then after that, we'll be, uh, we don't have the exact location for that co-op happy hour yet, but we will uh, uh, stay to, you can have a look at the, the Cooperative Vermont Facebook page and site, and that'll, when that information comes up, we'll, uh, we'll post it. And um, you know, as always, sort of in between, uh, in between shows, we do the show every two weeks, but there will be, um, we'll make sure to post uh, co-op news and uh, other, other things, and, and the, the full episode of the show will also be posted on, on the Facebook page and on the website, coopvt.wordpress.com. And if you want to check out some foliage next weekend and head over to Mad River Glen and mm -hmm. maybe take the, 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 the single chair. chair will be running on the, on the, on the weekend, and that is as, uh, the, uh, as the only cooperative ski area in, in the country. And uh, also, as we learned last week, if you check out our previous episode, the inspiration for the attempt to turn uh, New Whalum uh, a closed uh, amusement park in Massachusetts into a uh, consumer co-op. So, yeah. Um, yeah, perhaps the uh, the model for a wave of um, recreational co-ops that could be getting going. So, yeah, if you wanna you wanna check that out. Um, so, I think that about wraps it up for for this evening. But um, but if you uh, if you're ever interested, if you're part of a co-op that would like to come on the show, um, you can definitely. You can definitely shoot us an email, uh, coopvermont at gmail.com. Uh, and we, we're always happy to have new guests and find out about co-ops that we haven't learned about yet. So until next week, I'm Matthew Crop, And I'm Eric Davis. Good night.